All right, in this video, we're going to talk about leveling up your skills in JavaScript or whatever language that you like and preparing for coding interviews using Edibit. So the first thing we'll do here in Edibit is go to Shuffle. Now, it's fairly well established that Fang companies and other big tech companies give coding assessments at around the elite code medium level. And that's analogous to medium here on Edibit. Now it should be noted that when you're talking about Amazon and some others, that JavaScript is not going to be an option for you. You'll need to do Java, C, C++, maybe some other languages, but for Amazon specifically, JavaScript not an option and likely not an option at some of the other ones. You may do JavaScript in your job. That will not be the language that will be used with your initial coding assessment. And so it's important to go in and understand how to solve these problems in whatever language you're comfortable in. But at some point, if that's your goal to get to Amazon or someplace like that, then you're going to need to know how to do these things in C, C++, Java, something like that. And you will likely use Java in Amazon and now Rust, so that's great. But in any case, using JavaScript initially is great. And either way, whether you're going to Fang or you just want to level up, you need to work on doing coding problems. And so, as I said, medium is about where the tech companies of the world test you at for that initial coding assessment. And so if we go here and we say difficulty medium, and here on Edibit we have this great tag interview, and we hit shuffle, and what do we get? Okay. All right, and now we'll go ahead and start writing code here. And with Edibit or Leak code or Algo Expert or any of the other ones like that. And when you're doing your coding assessment actually for one of these companies, it's best to go work on it in your editor, get things going, and then go ahead and copy and paste it over to the web interface that they have and wired things up. That way you're comfortable with it because these things are usually timed and you want to be comfortable whipping out the solution. You know, for me, if I had to type in an editor that didn't have Vim key bindings, I would be stuck. I just, it's just, it would take me forever. It's just a nightmare. And so I recommend using the editor that you like working out these problems and then putting them in and testing them with the web interface. And that's what we're going to do here. All right. So over here with the code, I'm just adding on checks to see if we have the numbers that we want inside of the different arrays and filtering. All right. And I'm going to return what's common. All right, we'll log this out. Let's test this up. Okay, good. Two and three, that's what I want. Okay. Now, let's get these tests. All right. All right, so... Now I need to add things up. Just add it up. Okay. Let's try this out. Great, that's good. Five. Excellent. All right. Handle the zero case. So we have nothing in our array. Hand it back. Right. 
Cool. I think that's pretty much it. Make sure we have the zero check here. Let's go. Okay, good. Okay. Oop, oop, oop. Okay. Try this out. And should be good. And what? What is going on? Okay. Oh. All right. Okay, see. Right. Okay. All right, we're dealing with duplicates here. Okay. Well, it doesn't really explicitly say that, but I guess it's in the example. There's a test. So let's just go back through again and <laughs> kind of force this. Right. And switch you out. Okay. All right. Fine. Try it out. Hooray. Submit it. All right, well, I'm looking at some of the solutions here and they would not pass that same test either. And so I'm thinking that the creator of this solution came through and added extra tests later. You can update your challenges that you create. And so you could go in and add additional tests and make it more difficult. So you'll find solutions in here that, you know that won't pass the tests that you see and some that will depending on when they did them because you know once you're in you're in so that's one thing to look out for our solution works and actually looking at some of these other solutions it's pretty much in line with a lot of them so it's fine and it's better than i thought i think just wanted to put that in there to watch out for that little gotcha all right in addition to going through and knocking out the challenges you can look at areas that you may need to work on so if you need to work on a mathy area then great if you've been asked in an interview what a closure is and you had no idea then it might be good to go through and do the closure exercises and of course geometry is always good higher order functions but a very good tag is interview if you go through these, these are going to be interview questions from actual places or at least takes on them. That might be a little bit different. If you work your way through interview medium for the language that you want, you're going to be good and ready for any FANG interview. This is similar to Leak Code, Algo Expert. If you can knock out these medium interview questions in 15 minutes or so, you know, definitely use a timer. If you can knock those out, you should have no problem passing the initial code challenge piece of the you know interview process for any of the fame companies or any of the other thousands of software companies who use code challenges. Another way to truly understand how JavaScript works or whatever language you're working on and truly understand a little bit more about software engineering and not just coding is to actually write challenges. So I'll show you that right here. All right. So if you go up here and go to new challenge, you get the opportunity to obviously give it a title, set the difficulty and you can set the difficulty initially. 
you can set it to medium, but if enough people finish it and vote that, hey, this is actually very hard, then it's likely to get moved up to being labeled as hard. That is what I'm led to believe by the fact that you can actually level these things yourself when you're done. And so you set an initial difficulty, ultimately it could be changed. I believe that's the case, otherwise what's the point in asking the group what they think? And as you know, one person's very hard is another person's easy. So it's all relative, and so they try to find a happy medium. And of course you pick your language and your tag. Now, you can add your instructions, you'll ultimately get to add references to say Wikipedia and some other places, so if you're using some sort of famous math algorithm or some other thing that requires ancillary knowledge, you can link to that to help people along. And you'll put your code in, of course. And then writing the tests. So writing the tests really helps you learn more about the language and software engineering in general. As an engineering manager, you get a lot of candidates who can whip out code, but they cannot write tests. So a lot of mentoring is needed on test-driven development and writing unit tests. So if you want to give yourself a leg up, be excellent at writing tests, meaningful unit tests and test-driven development so that you can get good design of your software with all the different tutorials and videos and everything else all over the internet there's a lot of coding going on but there's not enough software engineering going on being able to write good tests is critical to being a good software engineer and if you're at a company that does not do meaningful thorough unit testing you should look for another job that's how critical it is you know if you're perfectly happy with being where you're at that's fine but you can't level up until you understand that piece of software engineering. So just coming in here and writing your tests for the challenge that you came up with is great practice for that and really helps you understand. And you'll get deeper into Python and JavaScript when you know how to write tests for the code. So you have all that that you can do there and you can publish it out and watch as people come through and do it. And it's really great. So Edibit is getting tons of new challenges added all the time and nothing costs you any money right now as far as i know uh potentially i'm wrong on that but i don't see anything paid maybe eventually there'll be ads or something or there'll be paid pieces but i don't see anything that costs any money but then again i'm an early adopter and i am a pro so i'm not really sure what that <laughs> means if because I was an early adopter, so maybe if uh, you know you log out, you get uh, well here. Let's let's see here. Let's open this in a private window. Let's see what happens. I don't want to give you wrong information here. Let's see tutorials. Naturally, oh, okay. Well, let me let you go for it here. Let's see if what register is. Uh, well. I'm assuming this stuff is free. I don't see anything about anything costing anything, so I can only assume that eventually there'll be ads or paid pieces. Click on the roadmap here. Achievements, leaderboard. Yep, not sure. Anyway, it's free. Go for it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And the community, that, you know, so far that I've noticed and I've been off and on for a while now really friendly helpful so it's great to get in there and answer questions if you're you know an expert ask questions you know whenever you do a challenge if you've completed it you can go into comments kind of slow today you can go into comments and talk about things or suggest things and you can see matt here this is the uh, creator I believe and uh, that's why he's got uh, a lot of rep here and you have good conversations you can help people it's really nice and if you sign up 
or here and say subscribe to JavaScript questions, then you'll get questions that people pose sent to you and you can come in and, you know, answer and help. And it's really nice. And so far I found it to be, you know, very pleasant. You get good feedback on your challenges that you create and other things. So anyway, check it out. Enjoy, learn, get better, level up and best of luck with your career. And I appreciate you watching. So please like and subscribe. That helps me know that I should keep on making content and have a great day.